three. And welcome. We're live tonight here from Mineral Area College at, in Park Hills. I'm Tyler Wagner along with David Jenkins bringing the, tonight's game. And, David, we got a nice matchup tonight. Sykes versus Park Hill Central Class 4 sectionals. We do. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle, I think, for Park Hill Central. Sykes is a heavy favorite coming into this game. I think, uh, you know, it's it's going to be really tough. Uh, you know, Park Hill Central has a very good player in Drew Skaggs. Uh, he averages about 21 a game. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's kind of everything for their their team. You know, he's going to get about, like I said, 21 a game. Uh, he's inside uh, primarily, but can step out and hit the jumper. They have a good guard and Alaric Jones, who's a uh, good player as well. So, uh, you know, Sykeston, you know, like I said, the heavy favorites coming into this game, uh, but those are the two guys that they're going to need to slow down. Sure, and Sykeston riding a nice wave coming into these sectionals, had a nice victory over Cape Central handily in the Class 4 District 1 final, and probably a lot different team that they'll see in Park Hill Central tonight than Cape Central. Right, you know, uh, you know, they play a different style up here in the middle area. They're not quite as uh, up tempo, and and they really, uh, you know, they really don't push the ball as much up here. So it'll be a different type of style that uh, Saxon hasn't seen for a while. Sure, and you know, we don't see a lot of Park Hills Central. They got to stick up to here in the middle area. And Drew Skaggs, this is one kid. What what can we expect from him tonight from Park Hills Central? Uh, he's kind of an he's about six three, six four. He's an inside guy. Can step out and hit the jumper a little bit. Um, he, he's a very good player, rebounds well, very athletic. Um, you know, Sykes will have their handfuls uh, guarding him, but he really hasn't seen the quickness that he's going to see tonight against Sykeston. And that's that's kind of the matchup when you get, say, Southeast Missouri Boot Hill versus Mental Area. You've got slow, methodical, more slow, methodical gameplay uh -huh. out of Mental Area and more quickness in the Boot Hill area, and that's kind of the – contrast between these two areas and you know you just really don't know what to expect coming into these games right coach harlow for uh mineral area he's familiar with southeast missouri you know he coached at east carter county for several years uh won a state title with them so so he's very familiar with uh, southeast missouri basketball and how they play uh, you know, Park Hill Central comes in. They're 21 and six. Uh, tw Sykes and 24 and two. So, both these teams are very used to winning, and uh, they are uh, they're trying to get another win here tonight. Thank you. 
Drew Skaggs. So those are the starters for Park Hill Central. For Sykeston, you're going to have Deshaun Ruffin followed with uh, Kylan Gross. JT Jones. Reese Porter and Marquis Bratcher will round out their starting lineup. Sykes and coached by Greg Hollifield. This is their fifth straight time here in the uh, sectional game in class four. Park Hill Central, first time since 2007. So you know, Sykes is very familiar, they've got the experience. And we've got a packed crowd here at Mineral Area College in Park Hills here for the Class 4 sectionals, boys and girls game. We're leading off with the boys here at 6 o'clock. Glad you joined us here on YHC Channel 21 and SeamoSportsZone.com. Here we go, the tip from Mineral Area College. Tip up and it'll be off of the Bulldogs, possession yeah. to the Rebels. Porter kind of double tipped that one, got the tip and then tipped the ball out of bounds there. Saxon will come out in their full court pressure. Their 2-2-1 press. And already a turnover from Park Hill Central. Deshaun Ruffin up and scores. Saxon with a quick 2-0 lead. I think Sykeson's press is really going to cause them some problems. They've not seen pressure like this this year, and that's a second turnover in two possessions. Kylan Gross with an easy layup. A quick 4-0 lead for Sykeson. Two quick steals for the Bulldogs. Now Cape, or Park Hill Central with a three up in the corner. Up no good. JT Jones with a rebound. Ruffin pushes it up. Back out the Bratcher for three. Good. And a, and a quick timeout time by out. Park Hill Central. 54 seconds into the game. We'll take a break and be right back. This season and every season, experience Buick and GMC at Allen Christian and Dexter. In every GMC Sierra, you'll find professional grade engineering, plus special financing and deep discounts. Take a test drive today and see why the 2013 Buick Enclave and Lacrosse was named Consumer's Digest Best Buy. Our family's committed to your complete satisfaction both before and after the sale. Selection, service, and family owned, a perfect combination. You'll like the way we do business at Allen Christian and Dexter. And we're back to the action here. Soxon with a quick seven nothing run here in the first quarter. Park Hill's trying to handle this Sykeston defense. Almost another turnover there for Sykeston. They're just, their quickness, Park Hills is just not used to seeing that kind of quickness. And a backdoor cut. And traveling violation along the baseline. Turns it over to the Bulldogs. That's three turnovers and four possessions for the Rebels. JT Jones with a travel there. Got him trapped in the corner. Just gets out of it. Three pointer up in the corner, up and good. John Rebel. Comfort. Gets Rebels on the board. Right back the other way, though, is Reese Porter on a great assist from Deshaun Ruffin. And Saxon pokes it away on the press. It'll stay with Park Hill Central. 9-3, Saxon with a quick lead. You know, looking through the Class 4 District 1 tournament, David, you know, the Saxon press wasn't near this effective in the tournament, but it's, it's really bode well voting well for them here in this sectional round. There's a three from 
superfluous. Cuts it into nine to six. Looks like Park Hill Central is gonna settle for those outside shots. And deflected away underneath. And a scramble for it out of bounds off of Park Hills. It'll stay with the Bulldogs. Five and a half minutes remaining here in the first. They did a good job there of doubling down on JT Jones. They're gonna have to do that or he'll, you know, he'll go off for a lot of points. Ruffin forces a three, but Porter, the re offensive rebound, back up and in. He's already with four points. There's a push. I believe that'll be on Reese Porter, his first. That's one thing Sykes has to be very careful of is getting into foul trouble. And a quick basket there by the Rebels and turned over to the Rebels. So possession to Park Hills. Just under five minutes left here in the first. Park Hills beats the press, gets it off in the corner. Another three there by Comfort, doesn't go. Socks it back the other way. Easy layup for Deshaun Ruffin. Socks will really get out in the transition early on. Park Hills with numbers deflected out of bounds off of Ruffin. Skaggs tried to make a no-look pass there, but it just wasn't there. Socks is just too quick. They get back, and Park Hills can't get those easy layups. Gags forces a three there. It's off, but Park Hill Central keeps the keeps the ball. Another three from Park Hill Central. Rebound pulled down there by Jarius Ray of Sykeson. Sykeson back the other way quickly. Nice acrobatic layup there by Deshaun Ruffin. He has six points. Saxon leads 15 to eight. Saxon falling back in their patent 2-3 defense. They're very aggressive in that 2-3 defense. They'll trap in the corners. Constant movement. Ball tip there by Ruffin. Park Hill Central keeps it. And it looks like a foul on the shot. He got bailed out there. He was kind of caught in the air. Yeah, it looked like it might have been a deflection going up, but could he get called for the foul? He'll shoot two. Hunter Courtois at the line. I guess that's how you say his name, Courtois. Who knows? Hits the first. Knocks down both, 15 to 10. Park Hill Central and a man-to-man. -man. Well, it seems like the matchups for Sykes are very advantageous. They've been having, the, they've been getting the ball down low at will and been getting good, good opportunities early on here. Right, they have, and, and, and they'll do that against that man-to-man. -man. You'll see a lot of teams play man-to-man -man with Sykes, and you'll, if, if anything, you'll see them mix it up quite a bit. Right. They're so quick, they're very hard to guard man-to-man. -man. They can take you off the dribble, you know, but if you zone them up, they can, they can hit the outside shot, so they're really tough to defend. Oh. 
Ray knocks down both shots. It's 17 to 10. Three minutes still left here in the first quarter. Park Hills had three turnovers in their first four possessions, but they've kind of handled the pressure pretty well since then. And traveling violation turns it right over to Sykeston. I say that. Uh, he got a, got a little bit ahead of himself. That was Alaric Jones. He's a very good guard, all district, all conference for Park Hills Central. JT Jones backs in. And again, they just pound it down low. It's awful hard to match up with JT Jones one-on-one, -on -one, especially when he's got space there on the block where he can go either direction. Right. He's, you know, like I said, they're tough to guard, and if you're in a man-to-man -man against them, they're going to try to pound it low. And a foul out front committed by Bratcher. Now that'll be on Porter. Oh, excuse me, it's Porter, yep. That's his second. He's used to being in foul trouble. I think he's been in foul trouble every game this year. But Sykeson's very deep. They'll go nine or ten deep, so that, they, that doesn't phase them. Deep three at top of the key, no good. Over to Sykeston. Got 2.04 remaining here in this first quarter. Park Hill Central seems very content to shoot that three-pointer. They've shot probably eight or nine already in this first quarter. And again, Sykes in down low, nice passing. Jarius Ray up and in. Very good assist there from JT Jones. He's a very unselfish player. And turned over. And turned right back over to the Rebels. Park Hill Central got some numbers, looks down low. Fade away jumper up and no good, a little strong. And that was Skaggs there. Ruffin crosses over and gets it to Jones, but he's pushed underneath. Looks like Skaggs got him with the body a little bit. Second team foul. Side to JT Jones, back out to Vashawn Ruffin, about a 15-footer is off the mark, and Skaggs with the rebound. But Sykeson quickly back the other way, a back tip by Kylan Gross. Marquise Bratcher tracks it down. Darius Ray knocks down another shot. He's got six so far in the game. We've got a minute remaining here in the first. Three-pointer in the corner, up and good. Brandon, or Braden Mannion, another three for Park Hill Central. They're just basically settling for outside shots this entire first quarter. Turn around, jumper in the lane, up no good. Marquis Bratcher. Nice shot, off the offensive rebound, and he was fouled. Foul was on Buchanan. Mark Keith Bratcher will be at the line to finish the traditional three-point play. Put Sykeston up by 13. Off the mark, Skaggs with the rebound for Park Hill Central. And a shot along the baseline, and we've got a foul call. Looks like it was on JT Jones. Kind of tough to see here from our angle, but it looked like JT Jones got him on the arm. And it was. That's his first. Skaggs, who averages 21 a game, finally gets his first point. I don't know, Tyler, kind of looks like Skaggs is kind of forcing his shot a little bit here in the early going. It's both free throws. He, his shots seem to be all off balance, kind of fallaways, and, you know, uh, 
Well, it's one thing for him, you know, being one of the main horses for him, but he's got to look for a shot. You know, if you're the main guy for most of the year, you don't just take the shots that conveniently come your way. You've still got to be aggressive and look for it, especially in these state tournament games. Ruffin shot up, no good, and that's how the first quarter will end. 25-15, Saxton leads. And we'll take a break and be right back. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Is like I don't really you, you, you wouldn't do it there. you got to be crazy. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Professional service with care and compassion. We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes and Dexter and Bernie. And back to the action. Sykeson opens up the second quarter with a possession. Sykeson being very patient here, trying to look inside, get a good shot. Marquis Bratcher, a long three. Off the mark. And that's a turnover there for Park Hill Central. She finished with six turnovers in the first quarter. A quick one here in the second. Tyson running their typical motion offense. Uh, Bratcher wide open for a three. He's off the mark. Park Hill Central quickly the other way. Shots off the mark and chased down by Sykeston. And nice pass underneath to Jones. Finishes it off. JT Jones has really great hands. Can catch those hard passes like that from Deshaun Ruffin. Ball out of bounds off Sykeston. Stays with the Rebels. 6.44 remaining here in the first half. Three-pointer from the corner. In and out. And JT Jones rips down the rebound. Back the other way goes Sykeston. Again, Bashan Ruffin tries one of those real hard no-look passes. That time it was deflected and ends up being a foul on Park Hill Central. John Comfort, his first. Jarius Ray. Nobody guarded him on the inbounds play. I think he was kind of shocked that he had that wide open shot the first look. Skaggs off the mark towards Sheehy with the rebound for Sykes. Three-pointer in the corner off the backboard. And we got a tie-up. Possession to Park Hill Central. Zach Jackson for Sykes in there just kind of rushed that shot a little bit. I don't think he was... He's not normally a scorer for Sykeston, so. Ball into Skaggs, he's got some room, goes up. 
That'll be a charge. And it looked like he had an open shot there, a little too aggressive going towards the basket. Nice defense by Sykeston. That'll be his second team foul. And they certainly can't afford him getting in foul trouble. Looks like Park Hill Central going to his zone. Jarius Ray again. Jarius Ray with 10 points already in the game. And thrown out of bounds, turned over to Sykeston. Nice pass inside to Reese Porter for JT Jones. And Park Hill Central calls a full timeout. And we'll be right back. Let's talk about next year. This is the time of year to reflect on last season's crop and make decisions for next season. What mix of crops should you plant? Should you buy new equipment this year or get by another year with what you have? We'd like to help you make the financial side of your planning a little easier. Our Ag Department knows agriculture and they're local. Stop by and see us at First Midwest Bank. Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Seek shelter today. And we're back to the action here from Mineral Area College. Under five minutes remaining here in the first half. Skaggs off the mark, pulled back down, comfort kept Kept it alive for Park Hill Central, and that'll be a foul on Zach Jackson for Sykeston. And Sykeston really being aggressive defensively, forcing turnovers. If they they know if they commit a few fouls, they're gonna they're gonna commit those, but they're really looking to make it make that defense take its toll through through four quarters of the game. They do, and usually it's about this time of the game where teams start really turning the ball over against this defense. A nice shot there by Larry Jones, his first basket of the game, and that stops an 8-0 run from Sykeston. Ruffin, another nice pass inside to JT Jones. Park Hill Central got out there on the break and got the ball to Skaggs and he threw the foul. Couldn't get the basket to fall though. Fouls on Cord Sheehy, his first. Skaggs hits the first. Park Hill Central plays a lot of players, Tyler. They've got 25 guys on the roster we saw when we came yeah. in. And they're playing a lot of guys back and forth. Skaggs knocks both in. Marquise Bratcher attacks the basket. It had his shot, second shot block, and it goes out of bounds and stay with Sykeston. Quick shot on the inbound, up and good for Ruffin. Saxon's one of the best teams I've seen at inbounds plays, getting easy scoring opportunities. We've seen it a couple times already here. A 
Long three. Rip, rip down the rebounder by Hunter Quitai. He puts it back up and in. But Sykes then back the other way. JT Jones with a three. Ball tipped away by Sykes and JT Jones. Back up and in. Sykes and starting to pull away. They lead 43-21. And another steal by Sykes and Reese Porter with the steal. Porter out. Kylan Gross, a three, it's off the mark, but Sykes in a not great job by Marquise Brasher sneaking in there and getting the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds. And Sykes in really starting to widen this lead here. 22 point advantage here in the second. Yeah, it's like I said, you know, about this time in the game is when that press starts to take its toll and you start making sloppy passes and, and, and making some bad turnovers, which has kind of happened here to Park Hills. That'll be a foul. Markeith Bratcher right in the hip of uh, Alaric Jones. Actually, that one was on Jarius Ray. His first. Team foul number seven. They'll go. Alaric Jones beat the line for a one and one. He hits the first. Second, he's got four points in the game. And very patient here with Sean Ruffin up in the air, and he'll knock that down every time. 45-23, and Skaggs can't handle it. The ball goes out of bounds back to Saxton. It's 11 turnovers in the game for Park Hill Central, five in this quarter. Benefit of a bounce, a high bounce, went straight back through the through the net. There's a block by JT Harris. Sykes it back the other way, a long pass, kept alive, but it'll go out of bounds to Park Hill Central. Try to do a little bit too much there on the break. And Sykes will stay in their press. Almost got a steal there with Bratcher. Skaggs a three, and he just is struggling to find the rim right now. Ruffin on the drive, gives it up, and a foul on the shot. Hunter Courtois foul there. Jarius Ray goes to the free throw line. He's had a heck of a first half. First free throw is off the mark. He has 13 points so far in the first half. He only averages about nine a game, so he's really a uh, you know, really stepped up and scored for Sykes in his first quarter, first half. Misses both free throws. Hunter Cortai with another 
first shot there. He has six in the game. That cuts the lead to 23, 48-25. Looks like Saxon will hold for the last shot with about seven seconds to play. Ruffin shot off the mark. And Saxon leads 48 to 25 as we head into halftime. And we'll take a break. Be back with your halftime stats and discussion coming up. First State Bank and Trust in Dexter, we strive to be a community bank focused on serving the financial needs of our local businesses, consumers, and farming operations. As a local bank, we understand that our growth depends on the growth of the community and we'll make every effort to help our clients prosper. We now have an app for mobile banking. You can access your Net Teller account through our mobile app on your iPhone or iPad. Stop by and see us at 710 West Business 60 in Dexter. We look forward to serving you. Member FDIC. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. If you have the audacity to believe a financial advisor should talk with you, not at you. If you have the nerve to believe meeting eye to eye helps you see eye to eye. If you believe access to your financial advisor should be a right, not a privilege. Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance is celebrating our 100th year. We started protecting rural farmers way back in 1910, insuring folks no one else would. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance has been a family business for four generations, and we continue that tradition today, providing solid home, farm, and commercial insurance at very competitive rates. When the ice storm hit us, we were out there with you. All of our claims were processed within days, and we will continue to provide the best coverage and the best service for the next hundred years. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance, a century of service. I'm a full-time wife and mom and I also work as a substitute teacher. You can see why it seems impossible to get a college degree, but with Southeast Missouri State University's regional campuses, it really is within my reach. I can get a degree without leaving my hometown and that's important when you have a family. Getting a college degree isn't easy, but Southeast makes it convenient. At Glenn St. and Kennett, we have a lot full of inventory and the best rebates of the year. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn St. We just want the opportunity to talk to you about your next car truck. The rebates are the best of the year and interest rates the lowest to work with. It's a great time to buy and our people are excited to help you make the right choice. We realize you have a lot of dealers to choose from, but I can assure you, no one appreciates your business like we do. Glenn Sane and Kennett, and God bless our troops. Southeast Health. Diagnosis. Treatment. Rehabilitation. Prevention. A system of care. Here when you need us and where you need us. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Join us online. You'll receive a higher grade of home care from A Plus Medical Equipment, the only locally owned home medical equipment provider in Dexter and the surrounding area. We offer numerous services to provide for your home medical needs. And now available at A-Plus Medical Equipment, Diabetic Shoes. Stop by and see our large selection in our display room. If you're not satisfied with your current provider service, call A-Plus Medical Equipment at 624-2300 or visit us at our location behind the Hickory Log Restaurant in Dexter. I want to stay.
Call Auto Bell Hearing Center at 1-800-499-8786 or visit one of our locations in Dexter and Poplar Bluff, Missouri today. Quality Center Furniture and Appliance in downtown Malden for the best selection of Whirlpool and Maytag appliances. We also have the newest LCD, LED, and plasma high-definition televisions from LG and Itachi, as well as the finest furniture for your living room or bedroom. Quality Center is an AT&T authorized retailer. And don't forget, delivery is available. So come experience the Quality Center Furniture and Appliance Store in downtown Malden. With an interactive home security system from New Wave, your family comes home to peace of mind. Now we bring you the future of home security. Arm and disarm your system remotely from your office computer or iPhone. Even look in on family or pets with live video from inside your home. In an emergency, our 24-7 alarm monitoring responds with the help you need. Peace of mind, wherever you are. Now available from New Wave Communications. Get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Winner! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. And before we get into our halftime stats here, we want to let you know Pizza Hut and Dexter having the new Pizza Hut sliders, new pizza sliders, the new product by Pizza Hut. And everyone can get exactly what they want with these customizable mini pizzas. Mix and match with up to three of your favorite toppings to create your very own recipe. Get a box of nine sliders for $10 or three for just five. Again, that's a box of nine sliders for $10 or three for just five. Add on a two liter and breadsticks for just $5 to any order. Be sure to remember Pizza Hut and Dexter for your next pizza order. Phone number 624-5333. We're at half here in Park Hills, in Park Hills at Mineral Area College. 48 to 25 advantage for the Sykeson Bulldogs. David, what do you think of the first half? Well, I think, uh, you know, Sykeson did what they were supposed to do. They came out and they attacked uh, with their pressure uh, defense got a lot of easy baskets off turnovers. They really uh, forced the ball inside, got some easy looks down there, and uh, it's kind of what we expected. Uh, you know, we, we thought Park Hills would have some problems with Sykes, and then they have. And got a nice cushion here. Of course, you want to keep the pedal to the metal, close this game out. But Park Hills, they had a nice uh, timeout earlier in the first quarter. They came out and adjusted well to that pressure, but it just seems like they can't get into a good rhythm offensively and getting good shots. Yeah, they're not they're not taking good shots. It seems like they're settling for three pointers. You know, their their offense is basically just shooting threes and hoping to get a rebound if they miss. Sykes has taken advantage of that, grabbed those rebounds, and really gotten out in transition. And and you know, if you're if you're try, living and dying by the three pointer, you're going to die a lot more than you're going to live because uh, you know those are not high percentage shots. And you know, you can't count on hitting at a high percentage against this half court Sykes and defense and of course if you miss that leads to long rebounds and Sykes and loves to get out on the break and they've done that here in at times here in mineral area so uh Park Hill's got a big hill to climb here yeah. in this second half they just gotta take it possession by possession get their good looks but Sykes and you just keep the same recipe you just keep going hard right. playing hard defense and the points will produce themselves right Sykes and you know, Sykeson spells blood, and typically when they have a lead like this, they really put it away in the third quarter. So we'll see, you know, Park Hill Central just has to get some stops. You know, they're really not getting many stops against Sykeson. Sykeson just, you know, pound it inside, get those easy looks, and, you know, they've got 48 points out of it so far. And here we go, getting underway with the third quarter. Sykes it on top, 
JT Jones up in the paint, good. That's 13 for JT Jones, and that's just the recipe they had in the first half. Just throw it inside, let them dribble it to the basket, and get the easy shot. Park Hill Central needs to get Skaggs going. He only has four points all on free throws. There they get to the rim, but they're not able to score it, and Sykes them back the other way. Three-pointer up and good, J.T. Jones. And what a lot of people don't realize is J.T. Jones can shoot inside, he can score outside. He's not just a one-dimensional player. And that's a turnover by Park Hill Central. And, and if you're Park Hills, you're almost let him take that shot. You don't yeah. necessarily want him to reverse it and then get in position underneath where he's been doing so well tonight. So why not let him just take that three that he hasn't been taking all night, but he just steps up and buries it. Goes for another one. Boom. Another three from JT Jones. Yeah, it's kind of pick your poison with him, especially when he's hitting like this. It's it's tough. And, and Park Hill Central is finding that out right off the bat here in the second half. Three-pointer up and good for the Rebels. That's Alaric Jones. He led them in the first half with six points. He's got nine now. Ruffin along the baseline. Looks for Porter. Bratchard pulls it down and a steal by Skaggs. Looking ahead and overthrown. Turns it over to Sykeston. Yeah, they just... The pass was just a little too long, but they had an opportunity there to get an easy layup. But this game's quickly getting out of hand for Park Hill Central. It's 56 to 28. Three-pointer up. And good. JT Jones with three three-pointers here in this third quarter. Yes, all 11 of the points for Sykeson here in the third quarter in about two minutes. And that's a turnover, a walk. And, and Tyler, it's like I said, Sykes and they smell blood and they and they just go for the kill. And they're they're trying to put Park Hill Central away right here. It's awful tough. Park Hills, you know, you've been dealing with JT Jones in between the blocks all night. And now he steps out behind the three. And, you know, th that's definitely the hardest shot for him to have. But he's been burying it here in this second half. Jones puts up another one on the right side. <laughs> Knocks it down for the fourth time. This half. 14 points in two minutes and 20 seconds. And, and there's holding a, a foul, holding foul. So another turnover. And Everything Sykeson is feeling it right now. This crowd is into this game. Everything going Sykeson's way here in this third quarter. Actually, it's JT Jones' way, 14 yeah, that's points. Right. That's all they've scored is JT Jones, uh, 14 points here. Ruffin goes to Jones for another three. A little <laughs> off the mark there. He was feeling it. Yeah. That's, what do you say? You keep shooting till you miss. Yeah. He, he, he was did. grinning a little bit there. He, he knew that he probably shouldn't have taken that one, but when you're hot, you just uh, you'll, you'll throw him up. And three-pointer up, no good. Skaggs pulls it down, goes back up, and he's fouled. Foul was and on Bratcher. They really miss Skaggs underneath. They, their tendency is always to kick it out to that three, and they had Skaggs wide open, but they missed him. But he's got a chance to shoot two at the line. Yeah, Skaggs really needs to get on track. You know, he's our leading scorer, averages 21 on the season. He has four in the game, all free throws. Make that five as he hits the first of two here. Tyson making a hockey line change here. Skaggs hits them both. He has six off from the free throw line. Shot off the mark and tracked down by Park Hill Central. Skaggs takes it hard to the basket. Sheehy tried to draw a charge there, but he wasn't set. So Skaggs will go to the line for two more. 
And, you know, good players will do that if you can't get your – you get your shot to fall, or you're not getting good looks. You just attack the basket, try to get to the free throw line and get some points. And he's been perfect from the line. He's 7 of 7. And hits them both. He has 8. Sykeston leads by 30, 62-32. Sean Ruffin turned over Rebels with the steal. He tried to dribble it through the double team instead of passing it, but three pointer on the right side, strong. And traveling violation turns it over to Park Hills. Yeah, she had she saw, she I saw that open lane there, got a little ahead of himself and walked. But Sykeson is definitely in control of this game as they lead by 30 with four minutes to play here in the third quarter. All the way jumper by Skaggs, no good. Now with four minutes remaining here in the third. Ruffin knocks down the three. 65-32, and, you know, Sykeston, they, they, they have strong inside game, but they can also hit that three-pointer, and, you know, it's, it, they're, they're just a tough team to guard. Nice shot there by uh, Mannion. He's got five in the game. And nice scoop shot, won't go. And a jump ball. That'll go to Park Hills. Long three, and that's good. Colin Best. Excuse me, that's Bridges, the freshman, Jake Bridges. Bridges has really helped Park Hill Central. They brought him up off the JV for the district tournament, and he had 17 in the district championship game. Saxton very patient. And they'll call a walk there. Ruffin thought he was fouled. He slapped the floor there, and then if you play for Sykes and you slap the floor, you're out of this game pretty quick. And so Ruffin goes to sit the bench, cool down a little bit. There's a foul on Sheehy. Loose ball, they were kind of both going for the basket, but Sheehy kind of tripped him up as he was making his dive. That's his third foul. Teams third here in the second half. Skaggs an open look on the three and won't fall. Back the other way come the Bulldogs. Back Jackson with it up to JT Jones. Sykeston turns it over, got a little sloppy there. And a long three. Mannion, his second three-pointer of the game. He has eight points underneath. The shot's off. Park Hill Central back the other way. They're cutting into the Sykeston lead, but it's still a 25, so they need a, a lot more. And Skaggs off again, Sykeson with the rebound. And there's a foul by DJ Buchanan.
Skaggs leaves the game, and he's really struggled offensively here tonight. Three-pointer by Jones, knocks another one down. That's the fifth three here in the third quarter for JT Jones. 15 points, or actually 17 points in the quarter. Three-pointer on the left side, up, no good. Bratcher with the rebound. Under a minute to play here in the third. JT Jones straight to the basket, and he's going to get fouled. Park Hill Central has no clue how to guard him at this point. You don't see too many players like that, especially with his size, being able to score at will underneath and then step outside and knock down five threes in a quarter. Certainly a tough matchup. Yeah, and the thing is, he's only a junior. He's going to get better. So, you yeah. know, class four teams have another year to deal with him. It's his second free throw. He's a good free throw shooter, too. He shoots close to 75%, so you really can't foul him either. He'll, he'll knock down the free throws. Long three from Bridges, his second of the game. He's a freshman that can shoot. Ruffin attacks the basket, and he's going to draw the foul. And <laughs> Foul's going to be on Buchanan, his third. Reese Porter up, no, won't go. Rebound by Blake Nephew of Park Hills Central. Another three from Bridges off the mark and Brees Porter the rebound. Sykes and I'm sure will try to get a one quick shot here. Ruffin with the basketball. Pulls up for a long three off the mark, but he's going to be fouled. That's not what you want if you're Park Hills Central. Foul is on Nephew, his second, and Deshaun Ruffin will be at the line for three. He knocks down the first. Ruffin shoots about 85% from the line, so chances are these three are going to go in. Knocks all three in. Sykeston leads 72 to 43 as we played three quarters. And we'll be right back. This season and every season, experience Buick and GMC at Allen Christian and Dexter. In every GMC Sierra, you'll find professional grade engineering plus special financing and deep discounts. Take a test drive today and see why the 2013 Buick Enclave and LaCrosse was named Consumer's Digest Best Buy. Our family's committed to your complete satisfaction both before and after the sale. Selection, service, and family owned, a perfect combination. You'll like the way we do business at Allen Christian and Dexter. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go, one hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, 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 that's medium well. What, are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not gonna come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. I don't really you, you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. And back comes Sykeston with a 
29 point lead, 72 to 43. Bashawn Ruffin's shot was off. Park Hill Central back the other way. They're trying to run out here and a layup is good by Austin Caldwell, his first basket of the night. Sykes sent back the other way. A nice dish to Marquis Bratcher and he's gonna score. And that's a steal by Sykeston's Reese Porter, but stolen right back by Park Hills Central. Skaggs for three from the corner, and it's good. And that's his first field goal of the game. He has 11 points. And Sykeston helped their skelter down underneath. Park Hills Central comes away with it. Dish inside to Caldwell, and he's going to score. And again, Ruffin has the ball taken from him. Park Hill Central back the other way. Had the numbers two on one, but faded out to the three-point line. Way off the mark there on that shot. Sykeston back up the floor. Sean Ruffin kind of been a little sloppy with the basketball here early in this fourth quarter. He's that's very uncharacteristic. Or Keith Bratcher, a three, was well defended there by Park Hill Central. The Rebels back the other way. Bridges, the freshman, a long three off the mark. Marquis Bratcher rips down the rebound. Sykeson still holds a 24-point lead here, 74 to 50. And again, the ball is knocked away from Ruffin, but this time it was a foul call. That's going to be on Buck Annan. His fourth. He'll head to the bench, into the game comes Connor Proffer. Ruffin, a strong drive to the basket, and he's going to draw the foul. And that's going to be on Hunter Cortez. Ruffin will have two shots. First one's up and in. And knocks down the second. He has 19 points in the game. Saxon has three players in double figures. JT Jones leads the way, and then uh, Jarius Ray had a very good first half, 13 points. He's yet to score here in the second. Attack the basket, Hunter Katah off the mark. Reese Porter there with a the rebound for Sykeston, and the uh, Bulldogs back the other way. Ruffin. Turned over. Ruffin, another turnover. Very uncharacteristic. He's had several turnovers in this game. Long three off the mark, and Jarius Ray pulls it down for Sykeston. Ruffin almost has it taken from him back the other way. Makes a pass underneath. And it'll go back to Park Hill Central. Another turnover for Sykeston. It's gotten real sloppy here in the fourth quarter. You have a big lead. It's kind of hard to stay focused. You're just kind of going through the motions at this point. 
you know, Park Hill's really, you know, they're really trying to get bu you know, buckets and quick moments here, and, you know, Sykes and playing at that kind of pace, that's what kind of game you're going to get here towards the end. Yeah, that's a steal by Ruffin going the other way. And he's blocked. Nice block. But it'll stay with Sykes. Hunter Kota there with the block. No love there. You get the block and get taken out of the game. But come on, coach. <laughs> get a good ovation. JT Jones with the basketball. JT Jones fakes. Ruffin attacks the basket, gets the easy two. Long three off the mark. That's Rocky Calvert. Nice pass inside. Jarius Ray up and in. His first basket of the second half. He has 15. This Park Hill Central team, they've got a lot to look forward to. They've got a lot of young players. They're playing some freshmen and sophomores here tonight that are that are pretty good players. So, you know, the future looks bright for them. They can learn from this and, and, and learn how, the, uh, how they're going to have to play in order to get to the next round. Sure. You know, you just run into a very talented Saxton club and you can only come, come away. And it's good for these younger players to see it. You know, it's one thing to – see talent like this early on to where in the years down the road if you come across it again you at least know what you're up against right you know and as we talked about in the opening they're not used to seeing this style of play and and it's good to see that uh for these younger players skaggs off the mark he's had a tough night sykes him back the other way and there's a foul and harris will go to the line for two that fouls on skaggs That'll be his third. Skaggs came in with a lot of hype, and we were kind of wondering how he was going to match up against Sykeson, but he just hasn't got his shots to fall tonight. Harris off the mark with the first one. But he works hard, gets his offensive rebound, and scores. And I guess they just blew the whistle so they could get some players in the game here. A minute and a half left to play, 82 to 50. Sykes and leads. The clock is running here, and I guess they just stopped it there to let some players get in the game. Long three pulled down by Sykes and back the other way. Brown is going to be fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line with a chance to get some, get his name in the box score here in this sectional game. First shot up and good from Scott, Chris Scott. He hits both of them. So Chris Scott with two points there. 84 to 50, 25 seconds left, and they're just playing it out here. Shot off the mark, and Scott grabs a loose ball. Up the floor, lays it up off the glass, no good. And a scramble. Saxon comes away with it. And 
They're just going to hold it and let the time run out here on an 84 to 50 sectional win. Sykeson will advance to play either Festus or Gateway on Saturday at 6 o'clock. And we'll be back to talk about it in just a moment. Professional service with care and compassion. We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. Let's talk about next year. This is the time of year to reflect on last season's crop and make decisions for next season. What mix of crops should you plant? Should you buy new equipment this year or get by another year with what you have? We'd like to help you make the financial side of your planning a little easier. Our Ag Department knows agriculture and they're local. Stop by and see us at First Midwest Bank. Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Seek shelter today. First State Bank and Trust in Dexter, we strive to be a community bank focused on serving the financial needs of our local businesses, consumers, and farming operations. As a local bank, we understand that our growth depends on the growth of the community and we'll make every effort to help our clients prosper. We now have an app for mobile banking. You can access your NetTeller account through our mobile app on your iPhone or iPad. Stop by and see us at 710 West Business 60 in Dexter. We look forward to serving you. Member FDIC. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. If you have the audacity to believe a financial advisor should talk with you, not at you. If you have the nerve to believe meeting eye to eye helps you see eye to eye. If you believe access to your financial advisor should be a right, not a privilege. Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance is celebrating our 100th year. We started protecting rural farmers way back in 1910, insuring folks no one else would. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance has been a family business for four generations, and we continue that tradition today, providing solid home, farm, and commercial insurance at very competitive rates. When the ice storm hit us, we were out there with you. All of our claims were processed within days, and we will continue to provide the best coverage and the best service for the next hundred years. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance, a century of service. I'm a full-time wife and mom and I also work as a substitute teacher. You can see why it seems impossible to get a college degree, but with Southeast Missouri State University's regional campuses, it really is within my reach. I can get a degree without leaving my hometown and that's important when you have a family. Getting a college degree isn't easy, but Southeast makes it convenient. At Glenn St. and Kennett, we have a lot full of inventory and the best rebates of the year. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn St. 
We just want the opportunity to talk to you about your next car truck. Where rebates are the best of the year and interest rates the lowest to work with. It's a great time to buy and our people are excited to help you make the right choice. We realize you have a lot of dealers to choose from, but I can assure you no one appreciates your business like we do. Glenn Sane and Kennett, and God bless our troops. Southeast Health. Diagnosis. Treatment. Rehabilitation. Prevention. A system of care. Here when you need us and where you need us. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Join us online. You'll receive a higher grade of home care from A-plus medical equipment, the only locally owned home medical equipment provider in Dexter and the surrounding area. We offer numerous services to provide for your home medical needs. And now available at A-plus medical equipment, diabetic shoes. Stop by and see our large selection in our display room. If you're not satisfied with your current provider service, Call A-Plus Medical Equipment at 624-2300 or visit us at our location behind the Hickory Log Restaurant in Dexter. I want to stay connected to you. I like the way you do what you do. All right. Okay. You're fine. Call Auto Bell Hearing Center at 1-800-499-8786 or visit one of our locations in Dexter and Poplar Bluff, Missouri today. Quality Center Furniture and Appliance in downtown Malden for the best selection of Whirlpool and Maytag appliances. We also have the newest LCD, LED, and plasma high-definition televisions from LG and Itachi, as well as the finest furniture for your living room or bedroom. Quality Center is an AT&T authorized retailer and don't forget, delivery is available. So come experience the Quality Center Furniture and Appliance Store in downtown Malden. With an interactive home security system from New Wave, your family comes home to peace of mind. Now we bring you the future of home security. Arm and disarm your system remotely from your office computer or iPhone. Even look in on family or pets with live video from inside your home. In an emergency, our 24-7 alarm monitoring responds with the help you need. Peace of mind, wherever you are. Now available from New Wave Communications. And we're back here from Mineraria College. Final score, 84 to 50. The Sox and Bulldogs on top of the Park Hills Central Rebels. And no trouble for the Bulldogs here tonight, David. No, it was kind of what we expected. Uh, we didn't think Park Hills would really be able to handle uh, the, their pressure defense. Or, and, and they didn't. Uh, you know, they turned the ball over a lot and gave Sox some easy baskets, especially early. And then, and then they just kind of ran away with it. They hit some big shots there. JT Jones got hot in the third quarter and, and put them away. And that was uh, pretty much all she wrote. Sure, and Sykes will advance to the Class 4 quarterfinals at Farmington this coming Saturday night, and they'll take on the winner of Gateway and Festus. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Probably, you know, that's a toss-up, but it, it should be a game similar to this one. Neither one of those teams have uh, faced the team kind of this, the, the style of Sykes, and so, so we'll see. We'll certainly see, and we're going to try to bring that game live to you this coming Saturday from Farmington. Had some trouble tonight, so uh, if you're watching this replay, we apologize. Uh, not getting this uh, second half. Most of the second half we didn't get to you, but uh, we apologize for that. We'll be looking forward to seeing how the Sox and Bulldogs fare. Only one game away now from the Final Four in Columbia, and uh, maybe they can regenerate some of that magic from 2011, that undefeated season, to make another run this year. Yeah, you know, they're, they're playing about the best I've seen them all year, so so it's a it's a time when you need to be peaking, and they seem to be, so... So they seem to be primed to get back to the Final Four and, and try to get another state title. Sure. We'll be looking forward to it. David, we appreciate you doing the game with us tonight. We'll be looking forward to seeing you down the road. All right. Thank you. All right.